It's great to be with you for another daily devotion. And I want to talk to you today about grace. Grace is that thing that we love to receive when we've done something wrong, hurt someone, and we say sorry, and they say, it's okay, I forgive you. It's wonderful to receive grace. We've all felt that good feeling. Sometimes it's harder to give grace to others. But I want you to look back at the grace that God gives to us by looking back to the message last Sunday on Jonah. As we wrapped up the story of Jonah, you can look throughout the book of Jonah and you see God's grace being bestowed upon Jonah all the way. The fact that God hurled the wind across the waters. Grace to stop the boat. The sailors throwing him overboard. Grace. The sailors accepting faith in God when the storm stopped the moment they threw Jonah over. Grace. When God arranged for a large fish to swallow him. Grace. When he had repented, he was spewed out of the fish's mouth onto the shore. Grace. God comes to him a second time and says, I need you to go to Nineveh. Grace. Grace is always there. Even, you know, the plant that grows when he is dying of heat. Grace. The worm. Grace. God speaking to him again and again is grace. Look at where it all begins. It is the nature of God to be gracious. Isn't it exactly, by the way, what Jonah was saying to God? He was using it in a negative connotation. He says, you know, the thing about you, God, is that you're slow to anger. You're full of unfailing love. You are just full of grace. I knew you were going to do this. If they repented, you would forgive them, which is exactly what God did, which is exactly what Jonah realized that God had done for him, but he didn't want to extend it to others. But listen to this verse in Ephesians, the Apostle Paul is writing. He says, But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. By the way, in my Bible, exclamation point. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Isn't it interesting here? It says that he loved us so much, and notice the transformation that takes place, that even though we were dead, we were dead, yet he raised us to life. Now, that's a big contrast. When something's dead, it's gone. Yet when something's alive, it's full of life. And so in this, in this sense, he says, you were already dead in your sins. There's nothing we could do about that. You were dead because of sin. But because of Christ and what Christ has done, you live again. And it is only by God's grace that happens. Well, by the way, what work or anything can we do if we're dead? Nothing. But with God's grace, all things are possible. So what takes us from death to life is not our own work or efforts. It is the grace of God. Exactly what we've seen all the way through the life of Jonah. The grace of God. It's not only in Jonah's life. It's in your life and my life. The grace of God that is always there, that we can call upon, that takes us when we put our faith in Christ from death to life. It's only by God's grace, it says, that you have been saved. And thank God for it. Let's pray. God, we thank you again as we reflect back just for a moment today on the sermon series we wrapped up on Jonah. It really is all about grace. And we thank you for that. We also thank you, Lord, that it's your work, not ours. It's all that you have done, not what we have done. And we thank you for the grace that you have bestowed upon us, that we put our faith and our trust in you, and you take us from death to life. That's grace. We don't deserve it. We can't earn it. But you freely give it to us, to all who put their faith in you. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today, reflect and think about God's grace, and may you rest in the grace of God.
We'll see you tomorrow.